up right now. Miss Quan. Miss Quan herself commented on our Instagram post. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now, come on now. If you're not following us on Instagram, you are missing out. Do you find yourself referring to things as cuckoo bananas? Are you dreaming of the day Paige Michael Chuck will call you hun? Are you still wondering, whatever happened to Terry? If so, you're one of us. I'm Ari. And I'm Asha. And we're two friends who learned everything about life from the craziest school on television. We'll be breaking down every episode of Degrassi, The Next Generation, and asking the question, does it still go there? You're listening to The The Spirit Spirit Squad Squad Rejects. Hello, Asha. Hello, Ari. I love that that's our unofficial, unofficial intro. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm a little sleepy, but um, wake but the fun up. I'm up. <laughs> I'm I'm here. I'm I'm here, and I'm excited to do this. And I really like this episode. How are you today? I'm great. I've got energy. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna balance us out. I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna give them JT. You're gonna give them Ashley. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I didn't say Toby. Ashley, remember we said Ashley's like, she's um, she's kind of chill, chill, but a little like, dry, dry, but also, but also packs, packs a punch. punch. I'm here I'm for here. it. We love I like it. Ashley later on in the series for sure. Okay, <laughs> Ashley season six. Ash- no, yeah. Ashley season two. Ashley season two. I like. I think um, season six might actually be my favorite season, but I'm I gonna reevaluate so, that as I watch. Well, I just I was like thinking for some reason in my head I was like oh my gosh this is gonna be like 20 episodes of season one and then I looked and I was like oh it's only 15 episodes mm-hmm. so we get to season two pretty quickly and that's when the ball starts really rolling but oh, yeah. it was this rolling episode, this episode yes this episode had some of my favorite moments um this was really your first time uh watching this episode mm-hmm. this is one of my favorite um season one episodes personally yeah for whatever reason I don't recall re- watching this um mm-hmm. I'm sh- maybe I did and it just never stuck with me uh, I'm like to be fully transparent I watched the episode three times because the first two times I did not fully like register it didn't like grab my intention for some reason <laughs> um but the, by the third time I could play you the renaissance chords that were playing the whole episode I, I was fully <laughs> invested but so let's get into the, the plot of the episode. So the main storyline was Ashley is a little jealous because Paige and Jimmy, our boy Aubrey, are Romeo and Juliet in the, um, it's not even a school play. It's just- It's like a class project. Class assignment. Yeah. Ashley's very jealous because she lets us know that Paige has taken everything from her. What are you drinking? I'm sorry. <gasps> oh my gosh, you're so right. We didn't ask what each other was drinking. What are you drinking? Hennessy and Tropicana lemonade. I'm gonna call it the Romeo and Julie because there's a Romeo and Juliet play in this episode. <laughs> okay, love that. It's a little sour. It's a little sweet. Um, there's a little. There's a lot of battling in this cup mm-hmm. right now. So you got the sour, which is Miss Page Michael Chuck. You got the sweet, which is Jimmy. What are you drinking today? I'm drinking a hot beverage today. No alcohol, but I'm drinking a hot tea, but I'm going to call it um, in honor of Dr. Sally coming to um, bless the viewers with a lovely sex education demonstration. I'm going to call this a hot and bothered Dr. Sally tea. Yes, I'm here. Okay. I'm and I have my lovely Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman mug. That's absolutely amazing. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't even see that. I didn't even know you had that mug. I love that. You know what's funny? Yeah. Did you Cause, actually cause, used to wait, watch? Because that said. <laughs> Can we not put this in? No, you have to put this in. Okay. <laughs> Let's dive into the plot of the episode. So we got two storylines going on of equal importance, in my opinion, and I think in your opinion as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. (laughs) Sorry. So we have 
um, the Ashley storyline. And basically what's going on is Miss Kwan, Queen Kwan, she has this assignment and she's having the kids pair up and do readings of different Shakespeare plays. Ashley, Jimmy, and Paige are doing Romeo and Juliet. And Ashley's a little jealous and in her feelings because she is not playing Juliet, but Paige Michael Chuck is with her man, Jimmy Brooks. So it's their anniversary. That's what we find out at the start of the episode because it, it opens with Ashley showing Terry this gaudy <laughs> necklace that she's like, do you think Jimmy will love it? And Terry, sweet angel Terry that she is, knows better than to keep it all the way real with her friend. <laughs> and she's like, he's going to love it. <laughs> I don't know if it was a bracelet or a necklace. All I know is it was a giant A and a giant J that yeah. you're not going to be able to put anywhere because he can't it's wear that around his neck and he definitely can't wear that on his wrist. <laughs> don't even know the length of it because it was... It was, it was too long to be a bracelet, but too huge. short to be a necklace. <laughs> Do you um, really know what it was? Because I I don't know if it was a keychain, a necklace, or I think it was like a I think it was a necklace. It was like a chain necklace. Thing. I should return it. <laughs> so so then Miss Kwan, Queen Kwan, is um giving out the assignments for the play they're going to do for a class, not a school play. It's just like an assignment or like a project that they're doing in their English class. They're doing Romeo and Juliet. Jimmy gets the part of Romeo. Unfortunately, Paige Michael Chuck gets the part of Juliet. Ashley gets the part of the nurse. And <laughs> already Ashley is not off it. She gives, it's the look that she gives Paige and then Jimmy gives Ashley iconic. Jimmy, okay. I have to be honest. Aubrey is not a great actor in the first season. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. in the first season. Okay, okay. First Disclaimer. season, first season. But I do live for the fact that we get so much Jimmy time in the first season. But definitely this episode, he's very like... <laughs> What are you talking about? Like no inflection in his voice. It's yeah. very, yeah, Jimmy gets better. Don't worry. But right now he's and not worse. the best. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I won't say why, but. Ooh, yikes. Yes. It is so... leak. <laughs> I also want to say that I had no time for Ashley who was like in her feet. First of all, I'm glad that you pointed out that it was not a play. It was literally just a class assignment. Yes. Chill, Ashley, chill. <laughs> it's not that serious. And yeah. also she's sitting there in her feelings. Like Miss Kwan is busy doing like legendary. <laughs> she doesn't have time to be like, oh, Ashley and Jimmy are dating. Let me make sure that they're paired together for this assignment. No, <laughs> <laughs> but it's facts. We get back to class and Mr. Sally is talking to the eighth graders. Mr. Sally. Mrs. Sa Dr. Sally. Yes. We always respect the DR. I'm so sorry. Dr. Sally is talking to the eighth graders. I truly thought Dr. Sally was a real person. That's so embarrassing. Maybe she is. Um, it's Dr. Sue, but it's not Dr. Sally. I, I, I thought remember that I was under the impression that she was meant to be like the Canadian version of Dr. Ruth, mm -hmm. who was a very famous elderly uh, sex doctor. Talk about sex from morning to night. That's who I thought she was. But maybe Dr. Uh, Sue, maybe Dr. Sue is someone. So we get to Dr. Sally's lesson and Jimmy and Ashley and Spinner and Paige and Terry all there. Spinner brings up Jimmy and Ashley's relationship and says, you know, very, very obvious, like who he's talking about. So I have this friend oh, about my age and um, he's been dating this girl for mm, about eight months. How do they know? How do you know when they're ready? So, to, and, and basically putting Ashley and Jimmy's relationship on front street, talk about how they're virgins. I didn't like the fact that he asked that question. It was stupid and just trying to put his friend on blast. Um, everybody in the classroom knew who they were talking about. Two things. That is actually the moment when you find out that they've been dating for eight months. Because this whole time, you don't know how long they've been dating. You just know that Ashley's like, our anniversary's coming up. I'm going to get him something good. 
what business do you have getting him something for an eight month anniversary? Eight months? That's such a random anniversary to be. Eight (laughs) months? Eight months. You could have waited till nine. That's like a better number. Oh my God. I'm just saying, I just thought that that was so cool. I was like, you're so corny with your eight month anniversary. Separate of that. I like the fact that when he was like, oh, my friend, uh, I have a friend who, you know, his whole speech about how you have, he's, he's clearly putting Aubrey on blast and or <laughs> Jimmy, he's putting Jimmy and Ashley on blast. And he's like, how do they know when it's time to have sex? I like the fact that this woman was keeping it all the way real with him. And she was like, mm-hmm. physically, you're ready. But mentally and emotionally, you may not be ready. And I was so here for that answer. I like the fact yeah. that she didn't sugarcoat it because she was talking to students. She kept it all the way real. And she mm-hmm. was like, maybe you are ready. Maybe you're not. And that's okay, too. I feel like that's why these these type of doctors, these women don't get enough recognition because they kept it all the way real. Because like mm-hmm. our health teacher wasn't saying that to us. <laughs> mm-hmm. He wasn't like, you're ready now, blah, blah, blah. He was like, don't have sex because you will get pregnant and die. But it low-key <laughs> felt that way in high school. Like, yo, most of, most of- <laughs> Now I wasn't pe- having sex. Neither was I. I, I I'm not, I'm, I was not having sex. My gay no. ass was not with anyone. <laughs> I'm just saying my closeted ass was not having sex. However, I know that a majority of our class, like a majority of 17 and 16 year olds, we're out, we're doing it. Yes, yes. You should at least be teaching them how to be safe and keep them properly informed. I think people have this perception that it's like encouraging sexual activity and it's like the act is going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's teenagers. Teenagers have been having sex since the dawn of time. Word. You need to make sure that they are properly informed and not afraid to ad- ask questions. And I don't even mean about sexual intercourse. I mean about things like how to properly um, use a tampon, something like that. Like things that are important that still falls under the realm of re- reproductive health. And I just think that it, I think that the school system is failing students across America because out of fear of something that is inevitable. No, but seriously, like, (laughs) no facts. And and I wish we had a Dr. Sally in our school. See, even this, this is in 2001. This shows you how progressive Canada was already in 2001. But so I'm wondering if we, I remember in eighth grade, we watched a woman giving birth. (gasps) So I'm questioning like, oh yes. Oh yes, I remember that vividly. <laughs> I literally blocked that out. That was like, you just brought a repressed memory out of me. <laughs> oh yes. Remember in a bathtub. Do you remember? So. <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. You guys don't know this, but um, we just cut out a lot of this episode because it was very graphic. <laughs> we were spilling Some tea a lot of tea. Spill. Oh, so after <laughs> class, after <laughs> Sally's class, we get to after the lockers and, and Paige is here with the, she was like, I think she was really informative. I like that she was so blunt and she was telling us everything. Ashley brings up the fact that Spinner talked about her and Jimmy's relationship. Paige basically was like, listen, if I were you, I would do anything to hold on to him just so Jimmy doesn't get bored. I didn't hear that he was bored, but I would just hang on to him just in case someone else tries to get mm-hmm. him away from you, which I thought was like, oh, it's awful. It's an awful Shitty. thing to say. Yeah. Um, I forgot that she's um, kind of f***ed up <laughs> the first couple seasons. Yeah, Paige is kind of the worst until later. She kind of gets better, sort of. Um, Paige sort of plants this seed and it gets actually really like, worked up on edge starts yeah. on edge and she, it gets her really um you can tell she's really anxious because now she's starting to take the things that Paige has said to heart and also we're seeing all these clips of like Paige and Jimmy rehearsing for Romeo and Juliet and Ashley is like really jealous and now mm-hmm. with this little seed that Paige has planted it's really getting her mind just like going a mile a minute and this is why, even though in like episode one and two, we were like, we stand page, we stand page. We're not standing 
this version of Paige. So Ashley notices this. Ashley definitely notices that Paige is being a little too flirty with Jimmy. She already doesn't like the fact that they're rehearsing together. And she's like, listen, our, our eighth month anniversary is whenever I'm going to give you a, she, she decides that she's going to have sex with mm -hmm. Jimmy. She's so she go all the way. She's going to go. She was like, I'm going to give him the ultimate gift. So she sees Jimmy in the hallway and she kisses him. She was like, my mom and dad are going to be out of, be away for the night. Toby's staying over his friend's house. So why don't you come over? Because remember what Dr. Sally was saying? Well, I'm ready. But I think that this is like, all of this stuff is happening over the span of like a week. Mm -hmm. And because Ashley goes online to order condoms, right? I can't believe you can buy condoms on the net. And then Jimmy goes to the store to get condoms. I was confused because this is an Amazon Times. There's no way she's ordering something yeah. online and it's coming in that same day. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's not two-day so, shipping. Yeah, so I'm That's assuming that point. she, like when she ordered it and then she got home and her mom's like, oh, what's this? And I was like, That's not, Possible. that wasn't the same day. Yeah. And so, to put it into perspective of like how long ago this was, a page and Terry, I mean, Terry and Ashley are literally sitting at the computer trying to purchase condoms. And Terry's like, I can't believe you can buy condoms on the net. The net. The net. And like, it, there is no same day shipping. <laughs> Girl, come on. Like, definitely you're waiting at, at least a week, probably longer. So, also, she probably gave like all, of, she definitely got hacked after that and all of her credit card information <laughs> was definitely stolen on whatever site she bought them from. <laughs> While this is going on, Jimmy is also going to get condoms from the store or whatever. And then like the guy at the at the corner store was like, I'm sure this is what you want. We have so many different sizes. We have small, we have extra small, we have No, he goes, We have extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And I was like, why did you assume that he first of all, why did you assume he was extra large because he's black? And second of all, why did you say that to a minor? <laughs> yeah. Why were you talking to a minor like, yeah, extra large? I was like, mm -hmm. what? So I will he was say, a minor, definitely inappropriate because it was definitely it was low key racist. Yeah, and yeah, here's my thing. That part made me kind of annoyed, and then it made me think about the past four episodes. Now we're only like five episodes in, so there's not a lot going on, but definitely future episodes, in my opinion. We don't get a ton of racial issues. There's like, once we meet new characters, which I can't wait for us to meet um, Aza later, but once we get new characters, there's not a lot of different cultured characters. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that we do get, they don't deal with a lot of racial issues, which is good if it was real life, but unrealistic. That they're not, but realistically, no, they're going to deal with these issues. They're mm -hmm. like, these are things that should have been brought up because police brutality as one issue is not limited to just America. It's the worst in America, but it's not, not limited to just America. There are racial issues everywhere. You know, people are going to say, oh, you're being extreme, you're being dramatic. Well, yeah, because like little jokes like that and little, that that's mm -hmm. like, for me, that's like, it's kind of like microaggressions. It's kind of like, oh, I'm going to say these little bit of jokes. Like I'm going to make these little assumptions about you because of your race. And like, mm -hmm. it's inappropriate, especially because he's a kid, but you felt like it was okay. If it were real life, that clerk felt like it was appropriate to say that even though he's a kid, because he's black, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like, it could be like, oh, that's funny. haha. -ha, he's black. So he has a big, whatever, but like, that's not, that's not cool. That was kind of annoying for me. That 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 sort of threw me off for the episode. Mm -hmm. um, Which is interesting because it's like we constantly joke about the fact that like it goes there, but it's sort of that's one of the things that it doesn't go there on. Yeah. Which is like really when, when it does, I'm like, whoa, but like most of the time it doesn't. Like most of the time we're dealing with a lot of other drama that like can be unrealistic. <laughs> so Jimmy shows up at Ashley's house. So everything is like really, you know, weird and awkward. And like, they go up to her room, they're kissing. And then she's like, I have to go to the bathroom really quickly. Yeah. And then she Just, has a moment where she, she has a come to Jesus moment where she's like, I don't want to do she, this. She goes, she looks in the mirror. She goes, when will my 
reflection show inside. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Look at me. So she has the moment in the mirror. She's like, when will my reflection show that mm -hmm. I ain't ready for this? So she goes back outside and she's like, I'm not really sure. And he was like, are you okay? And she's like, I don't know if I want to do this. And he was like, good, me neither. Just to be honest, neither am I. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so they come to this understanding, which was like very, very mature for kids. Essentially, they, they're, they're children and they're, they mutually made this decision and nobody was like angry with the other person because you see a lot of times that the guy gets upset with the girl and they were both fine. And they were like, the same you know way that The same way that Paige was sort of messing with Ashley's mind and playing all these mind games, Spinner was pretty much doing the same thing to Jimmy. He was, on, he on was the like, opposite end, just saying stuff that was basically convincing him he needed to do this and they both weren't ready and that is okay and that's respectable. I, I couldn't agree more. This is our clip of the day for a couple of reasons. Yes, you guessed it. Another poor transition. Anyway, here's the clip of the day. This is our clip of the day for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a cute moment between Ashley and Jimmy. And two, because of a little interruption that occurs that I really needed to call out and speak to. I get it that you're teenagers and you were like, well, my brother's not going to be home. But damn, you don't have a lock on your door? Facts. Ash, I'm home. <laughs> oh, um, you're home early. We were just um, making decorations. Yeah, for the dance. You could have said anything else. Anything else. She said. So you know what's funny is that they turn around, let go of the condoms, and they fly around the room. And then by the time they hit, fi mind you, they both hit Toby. <laughs> condoms hit Toby and when they fell off of his body that was already angry they turned back into condoms I just thought that was ridiculous it, so the whole thing is ridiculous and I'm not over the fact that like why did you not lock your door and also you just trusted the fact that your brother said he was going to be out I know right <laughs> don't y'all all live within like a five mile radius like everyone's always walking to someone's house like no one ever drives anywhere everyone's just walking everywhere That's true, yes. so like if he was like oh I just need to go home and get something real quick he can just walk home and walk in on you she just there was no preparation on her part yeah you know? well she's also in eighth grade so like and she was only gonna have sex with her eighth month boyfriend because Paige Michael Chuck threatened her like that's mm -hmm. that was her way of thinking so there was no planning the only planning she did was get a condom which good job mm -hmm. yeah you know what I will um I will praise her for the fact that she Terry was like isn't this something that the guy's supposed to do bless her heart we love Terry still and Ashley was like no the women are just as um we're just as capable of being prepared and we need mm -hmm. to be prepped and ready all time. So kudos, round of applause to Ashley for that. Okay. But I love this scene. I'm gonna continue playing it, but I did love this scene because I, I felt like it put into perspective, like they're, they're so young, they're still mm -hmm. like kids and peer pressure was really, if you wanna like come down to what the theme of the episode was, peer pressure was, Yes. high key there and mm -hmm. this scene really puts into perspective the fact that like they're still kids they like they're not ready and, and this is their relationship to them it's like mm -hmm. them being goofballs and just having fun with each other you think i'm a complete idiot gotta get these condoms away before dad and kate get home i'm out of bed and jimmy girls are not worth it believe me so then when they get when Jimmy and Ashley get back to school, everyone's asking them, So did you do it? Like, oh, so Terry comes up to Ashley and Terry and Ashley or Ashley goes up to Terry. She's like, Terry, I'm so sorry. I was a jerk. I shouldn't treat you like that. You're my friend. And Terry's like, It's cool. Whatever. Did you do it? And Ashley's like, No, of course not. We just realized we weren't ready. So then when Spinner goes to ask Jimmy, he lies about what happened. 
he's like, yeah, we were about to get in the, into it. And then her brother walked in, totally killed the mood. Personally, what I would have liked better was if Jimmy had like sort of said like, I don't kiss and tell, or just like kind of like, cause one, it's not his friend's business. It's not anyone's business. What you decide to do with your partner, it's no one's business. I would have liked better if Jimmy had said something like, I don't kiss and tell instead of just lying. Cause like, cause knowing Spinner, Spinner's like waiting for him to be like, well, you should do it this time. We should do that, blah, blah, blah. Do you want me to get, and then he's like, do you want me to beat him up for you? And Jimmy's like, nah, it's cool. It's whatever. But I, I still like that they, that I like that Ashley was honest with Terry and she's like, no, you're right. I wasn't ready. I'm not going to be a jerk to you anymore because you don't deserve that. Um, um, overall, I thought it was a good episode. I liked it. I thought, I th- to me, the main overarching theme of the episode was peer pressure. Yeah. And um, because yes, this episode dealt with like sex and all of that, but like really at its core, in my opinion, was like peer pressure because you could have swapped out the sex for anything. Like it could have been like, you know, anything else, like doing something because your friends tell you that you need to do it or like make you feel like you're inadequate because you're not doing said thing and doesn't yeah. necessarily need to be sex. It could be anything. I think we got a couple different perspectives on how people deal with peer pressure. And it was just interesting because I think it's something that every single person, I don't care who you are at some point in time, you have been put in a situation where you have been put to the test. Peer pressure is interesting because sometimes I think it's not even direct, like you need to do this, but it's your friend just maybe giving their opinion on how they would do something. And especially at that age where you're not really fully developed yet, you think like that impacts you in a way, just hearing their opinion on something where you're like, should I be doing this? Like am I a weirdo because I'm not doing this? Does this make me a loser because I'm not doing this? It's something that everybody deals with. We deal with that now at our jobs. It's like somebody does a project a certain way. You're like, oh, should I have done it like this? Or just like, yeah, like that's, that's, that's like a, that's like a across the board constant thing that we're dealt with. Mm -hmm. And you think that it ends in high school. Yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You think it ends in high school and it's forever. You will always deal with peer pressure. And I think it's something that, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think it's something that is like constantly a struggle. I think Mm -hmm. there are some people who are really great at being like, F you, I'm going to do do me no matter what. Yeah. I don't think that that's the majority of people. I don't. And I think that, across the board and when I say across the board I mean age wise like I don't think that it's something that like you get to a certain age and you're instantly like peer pressure doesn't affect me the opinions Mm -hmm. of other people doesn't affect me the um just feeling like I need to do something because someone else is doing it and I hold them to a certain regard doesn't affect me I think it's like something that is just like a constant struggle and you just you learn to maybe like how to deal with it in a better way than you would when you're a teenager Mm -hmm. or you learn how to control your reaction to those types of things but I don't think that it's something that completely goes away I agree it's It's time time to the grassy goal what moment for you Degrassi goes there (laughs) what what's my Degrassi goes there moment Um, I think, I really think that like the whole A storyline, Degrassi goes there. Mm -hmm. Like the whole storyline between Ashley and Jimmy and the peer pressure with like wanting to do this thing. And and also they're in eighth grade. And when you're that age, you think that you're so old. Yeah. You think you're so mature. Yeah. You really think like I'm an adult. (laughs) And I know how to do things. And when you're, when you're my age, over the <laughs> hill, you look back on that age and you're like, that is, you are a baby. Sit down. Where? Sit down and keep your pants on. What are you doing? You just, I roll my eyes so hard because I'm like, you think that you are grown as hell. You're not. Not, not even, 
not even a little bit to be perfectly honest like not even a little bit and so that's why I think for me that whole storyline Degrassi goes there for me the part that Degrassi goes there would be the moment when when Paige is like Jimmy's bored but I didn't hear you didn't hear from me that part I was like because that hurt that hurt to hear that I was like Mm -hmm. I think you've been in that type of Ashley predicament yeah where I felt intimidated by someone else because of something they said or something they like a gesture that they made and it made me feel like oh am I gonna lose this person that I care about because I'm not giving them enough and this person insinuated that they can give them more Mm -hmm. you know what I mean so that's that's that definitely went there for me because not even just personally I feel like that's something universal that we feel it's like oh am I doing enough can I keep this person that I care about around whether it's about a friend or you know a friend or or a significant other like yeah there's always that fear that you're gonna lose that person to someone else you know and we feel inferior in in multiple aspects of life our jobs our relationships it's like that the um the imposter theory do you know about that? About mm-hmm. how like we're all like, we think that we're like not. Bacon. Yeah. But I think that that applies to like our relationships too and our jobs. And and when I say relationships, I don't even mean just romantic relationships. I mean like friendships oh, like, and, and yeah. family and everything across the board. And then when you factor in things like peer pressure or people who are, are just so uncouth and nasty and say things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's weird because you would think that an episode about teenagers deciding whether or not they want to take the next step in the relationship, you would think that that would be unrelatable, but the core of like the themes of what was going on in this episode was so relatable, I thought to, yeah, you know, multiple age groups and genders and all of that I thought it was just a really relatable story I agree I liked it I liked this episode well that brings us to the end of this episode it's always fun chatting with you about the shenanigans and Degrassi I don't care if Degrassi came out in 2001 it's 2020 and we need some nostalgia up in here thanks for listening thanks for watching if you guys like this video uh, give us a big old thumbs up Comment down below what moment of the episode Degrassi goes there for you. We want to know. We want to hear it. Share this with your friends. Subscribe, like, comment, follow us, Twitter, IG, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, these nuts, all of it. Oh, not (laughs) these nuts. See you guys next week. Bye. There's a lot of this episode you guys will never see. (laughs) And it will live in the vault forever.